Good evening, everyone. It's the Twilight Zone. Um, <laughs> this is where we all get together because we all like to take care of ourselves. We all like to inspire each other, motivate each other. And it's a place where we gather once a week every Tuesday. It's what we call our huddle up, and everyone's welcome to join us. The uh, ones of you that are watching this recorded, I hope you uh, enjoy it and feel free to put input in the room if uh, you want to. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Anybody got anything they want to say for a start? No. All right. Let's see if I can do it successfully now. Let me make sure of something first. Okay, where's that thing? Is it over here? I love when I do this. Me and Dr. A, right? That's what I was afraid of, and I'm glad I did that. Okay, now I'll share my screen. There we go. So I have redone our little front page here, and I've added Dr. A. For those that don't know, Dr. A is the co founder of uh, Optivia, and he is. Uh, a, a physician in our program is physician led, as they like to say. The other people on this page are health coaches. Dorothy, she's from Michigan in the room. Martha, she's down here with us. Lisa, of course, is uh, here with us. And then me and Tony over there on the left, probably the right out there. I want to first start off, we're going to start putting the Habits of Health call in the support group. It happens on Wednesday night, but they do do a recorded version. I do attend these uh, Habits of Health calls. It's a good way to keep your habits in place. Dorothy, you used to cover a Habits of Health call. Do you want to say anything about them? Oh, I, I think they're, they're wonderful. I really do. And, and you know, um, maybe when you post that, you could tell them where they could find the playbacks? Mm -hmm. Well, when I post the recording, I'll do that. And okay. this week, it's going to be about no time for exercise. And we all know Susan Palace, but maybe not the people watching and Martha and Martha. Um, <laughs> yeah. Did somebody play that? No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, thank I you. love it. <laughs> Our pleasure. That was cool. Yeah. Very good. Did you have yeah. a good birthday, Dorothy? Oh, pardon me? Did you have a good birthday? I had a quiet birthday. I, I just did whatever I wanted to do. <laughs> That's a good thing. And everything's not cooperating with me. So tonight I've got a video that I'm going to share with you, but it's actually about uh, keto, and they've made a comparison between keto and um, Optavia. The the woman who is uh, who has made the video, her name is um, Felicia. and she was in the business, and uh, she's a trainer. She's also a nurse. And her business was, uh, the, the program she used for people to lose weight was the keto. And so now that she's an Optavia coach, she really has that inside knowledge that none of us have. And I know I hear people talking about the keto all the time, so I think you guys will enjoy that. And uh, her take on the keto is calories in versus calories out, and you know what we do. So let's go ahead and uh, let Felicia talk. You can see over here, does, it, does anyone actually know what the keto diet is? No. No. So it's 70, 80% uh, fat, 
20 to 25 percent protein and five to ten percent carbs they really cut your carbs down and you can eat as much as you want that's why she makes the point about folks it's calories in calories out and so when you're eating any, as many calories as you want it does make a difference and then of course what she's doing is she's now an Optavia coach and she is comparing and you can learn a lot about the ketogenic diet here uh has anybody else in here has anybody talked to them about the keto yeah, my brother's on it. Yeah, see, I hear that all the time, too. So yeah, my brother, I, my I, brother, he has diabetes, and it's working for him. Yeah. Hey, guys, good morning. Welcome back to my channel. I am early to work, so you can hear? I wanted to make a quick little video for you guys and talk to you about some things that I have learned in regards to keto versus Optavia. I get that question asked to me a lot. They, everybody wants to know what is the difference between the two what have you learned have there been any um, like epiphanies or anything so I figured I would try to answer as many questions as I can in this little video and if you have any more questions feel free to leave them in the comments below I'd be happy to answer anything that I couldn't answer for you today so on keto you guys know if you follow me um, that I was on keto for several years and it was such a success for me um, very very successful in regards to um, having my own business and creating meal plans and helping people lose weight and get healthy and while a couple of years on keto um, worked for me towards the very end um, I was not healthy and I wound up going to the physician and getting a checkup and realizing that keto was no longer going to be part of my lifestyle so um, I, with all of that information, I stumbled upon Optivia and decided to try it with um, permission from my doctor. And here we are, almost seven months, six and a half, seven months into it, and I have lost over 41 pounds and feel phenomenal. I feel so good. So, um, just a couple of things that I have. Um, noticed that are some differences so here we go number one the first difference that I have noticed big time and I will stand by this till my dying day is calories in versus calories out matter for me again this video is just basically about my um, journey with this and some people will disagree with what I have to say but that's fine um, this is just regarding myself calories matter when I was on keto I was eating sometimes 300 to 400 calorie meals and I would have about like three of them every day and then we're not taking into account added fats and extra things that I was taking in um, I at one point when I was really strict with uh, my fitness pal I was up to like 2200 calories per day that is way too much I'm only five foot four and I really you know I was working out heavy in the gym but I still wasn't burning off 2200 calories in order to actually lose body fat not just weight body fat you have to have a um, not a surplus of calories you want to have a decrease in calories um, a deficit they call it so that your body um, actually uses some of the body fat when I was on keto and coaching and writing meal plans you know and I would ask people how tall they are what their exercise routine was like um, I would try to coordinate you know a meal plan for them that fit their lifestyle and exactly what they were looking for the um, the whole thing about keto uh, even Optavia it's it's very custom like you can't take a million people and put it into one scenario and have it work um, it will work but everybody's different that's why like if you look at plans like Weight Watchers for instance it's great it teaches you what you can eat what you can't eat what have you how much portion control but everybody's different like there might be people in the Weight Watchers class that can eat a bagel that can eat you know um, candy for Halloween and still count their points and then people in the class may do the same thing and they don't lose weight that week or the other person does so we're all different keep that in mind but the one thing that is a constant across the board for everybody is calories in versus calories out you have to get into a calorie deficit in order to lose body fat and that is one of the main things that I have learned through this journey
The second thing that I've learned is that, again, this is for me, but Optavia definitely um, wins with this one. Eating small meals every few hours. The reason that this works, and I, I know this about myself because years and years and years ago, that is what worked for me. Also, when, when you eat a small portion every couple of hours, so let's say it's 10 o'clock and you just ate, right? I'm gonna give you an example. Hold on, guys. I gotta get it out of my bag here. I like how informal so, we all are. Hold on, hold on. Ah! Okay, so this, is a meal for me okay this is not this is not like breakfast and then I have to wait for lunch you know like some people do they grab a protein bar they're out the door and then they don't eat again until the afternoon or they do intermittent fasting and things like that this little bar is only um, 1.13 ounces so it's 32 grams it's not a lot we're looking at um, 110 calories and it has three grams of fat. It has 12 carbs. Four of them are from fiber. Um, and 11 grams of protein. Within this little bar, this is enough to keep me satisfied for about two to three hours. For me personally, I eat every two hours. That's just how I am. But this is, this is the example that I like to give everybody. If you are, let's say, a car, right? and you put gasoline in there to drive you can fill up your tank and go and go and go and go but what happens the car is going to slowly start to die out and then you can fill it up again and then it's going to go and go and go and go and die out and then you fill it up again it's using the gas that you're putting in to go with this, this is like my gas, and that is why Optavia likes to refer to these little things as fuelings. We are fueling our body. These are fuelings because we fuel our body. On Optavia, the whole point of eating every two to three hours is so that you fuel your body and you go about your day two to three hours. You're gonna burn off 100 calories, okay? And then what happens? You fuel again. And you use the hundred and something calories and then you fuel again and then you do it again. It's like you don't have a chance to store anything. There's no fat being stored on Optavia. Where on keto, let's just say I made three whole eggs with a tablespoon of butter and some bacon and some um, avocado. I mean, that is jacked with calories and fat. And when you're keeping your carbs so low on keto, yes, it does it does not allow you to put on fat like from the carbohydrate but if you're not burning off the amount of calories that you're taking in in that huge meal before you eat again you're gonna put on body fat you're it's like putting gasoline into a car that doesn't need it yet it's gonna overspill and that overspill is body fat and that's why some people gain weight on keto it's just too much, too many calories, and we don't need that. So again, calories in versus calories out is one of the biggest differences um, that I have found for myself on keto versus Optavia. The next thing is I get asked a ton of like, how can you stay on Optavia? It's packaged food. You know, you're going to need regular food at some point. And that is true. On keto, it's like one lifestyle. You eat a certain way and you hope to lose weight and you probably do in the beginning, but it doesn't get sustainable for a lot of people and mostly women. Men, for some reason, the way their bodies are with um, you know, their amount of muscle versus body fat in comparison to a woman, we have a lot less muscle and more body fat. That's just the way it is. That's how we're programmed because we carry babies and we need that extra body fat. So it's easier for men. If you look on YouTube at the successful people that follow keto in the long haul, there's only a handful of women that truly can live the lifestyle and not gain weight. And those women typically were very thin and athletic before. And you know who I'm talking about. Most of the people you'll see are men. The men. The men can do this I don't know why it's physiologically different whatever not that women can't it's just different we're built different um, 
But on Optavia, we are not eating this food forever. The program does transition and maintain you. So you do eat their food until you reach your goal and then you slowly get weaned off of it and the company and your coaches like myself will teach you what to replace those little fuelings with so that you can sustain a life after Optavia. That's the goal. Nobody wants to be on packaged food forever. I don't. But I do like to use it to get to goal, which you've seen happen. I've posted a weekly weigh-in video every Saturday. You can go back in my library and look at those. Um, it's a tool. Optavia is a tool. Another thing that I've learned throughout this whole journey is, guys, don't kill me here, but good carbs don't hurt. <laughs> and you can have more than 20 grams every day. <laughs> so I, let's look at this. Okay, so... I eat Optavia's fuelings every day, and they are all interchangeable. I could have five of these every day, I could have one of these a day, and five other things. I could have three, like, it doesn't matter. They're all the same, pretty much macro wise. So they're all interchangeable. But I have this with me, so I'm just going to say this has 12 carbohydrates, and I eat five of these a day, plus my leaning green, where I have. Um, two to three cups of vegetables and that on top of that is probably another 25 to 30 so you're in the range of like 100 to 150 I'm just giving a generous range of carbohydrates on Optavia where on keto it's like 20 grams or less I will be honest when I was on keto at certain points, I was like neurotic. I was afraid to eat that extra piece of broccoli because, oh my God, I'm going to go over my 20 grams. It legit became an obsession for me. I would weigh out everything meticulously. Like I would cut a piece of broccoli in half and put the other piece away because I was going to go over 20 grams. How in the world can someone live like that long term? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I, it truly became an obsession. And when I wasn't losing weight anymore and when I wasn't feeling well, it kind of was like, this is annoying. It's not working. Is it me? Is it what I'm doing? Like you start to really get down on yourself and then you trickle away. I have learned that you can have more than 20 grams of carbs and lose weight. It's fantastic. I feel so good and I know it's because my uh, vitamins are being met 100%. All Optavia food is 100% through recommended daily allowance for that. I'm getting in all my potassium. Do you guys, any of you that were on keto get heart palpitations or do you track your macros in MyFitnessPal and realize that your potassium is like way low? That's not good for heart health. You know, um, I did realize that, you know, magnesium was needed on keto to help me go to the bathroom sometimes. It's not normal to have to use a supplement to go to the bathroom, period. You are supposed to get your nutrients from food. And that is something that I learned big time. I get a lot of people that start keto and they're like, I'm having palpitations, I'm lightheaded, I'm this, I'm that. A lot of people when they're trying to transition feel that way but a lot of people long term will I will still get emails from clients that are on keto because I still help them they say to me I am getting palpitations every day I don't know why and obviously I'm gonna say I would like you to check your potassium but I always refer to a physician because I'm not a doctor I'm a nurse I can't diagnose things like that but I can assist so see your doctor if there's any changes in heart health Check your potassium level, check your sodium level, check your electrolytes. Those are things that are um, within our body that help conduct the electricity for the heart. So, um, you know, on Optavia, because our carbs are a little bit higher and we have all of our potassium and our magnesium and our B vitamins and our D vitamins and our, like everything, you feel so good. And I think part of, again, your body letting go of body fat and things is when you're in that homeostasis, when you're balanced, when your pH is good, when all of your vitamins are good, that's when your body is like, okay, I'm not afraid to release whatever I have to release. It's just amazing. And you don't have to count anything on um, Optavia. You do have to count your lean and green, but you're learning as it goes. And when you transition, 
you will learn more of that so that when you do come off of it, um, you'll be able to eat again. So I look forward to part of my transition coming up in December is going to be incorporating fruit back into my diet, uh, some more vegetables, and I'm actually looking forward to that. Um, I will be able to introduce some um, carbohydrates in way of grains if I want to. It's not necessary. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I don't. I do know that like bread and cereal and things like that are definitely trigger. Um, and it's not. I'm not talking about like. Um, um, I don't know, cinnamon toast crunch. I'm talking like, you know, bran. I'm talking about like, um, you know, oh, things like that, like whole grain, not, um, you know, not like the lucky charms when I say cereal. Um, so yeah, so those are some things I've learned. Another thing that I've learned is that you don't need to kill yourself in the gym. That was something that I was doing like you wouldn't believe. And again, if you go back into my library, you'll probably see a lot when I was working out. And I love that. I love the heavy lifting and, you know, getting stronger and feeling accomplished. But, you know, it was like I wasn't losing the body fat. I was building muscle, but the fat wasn't going away. So, like, I was building muscle on top of body fat. So, I was getting bigger. And I'm like, what am I, why am I killing myself here when it doesn't work? And um, now that, you know, I'm going to start getting back into the gym and whatever, and the body fat is way down, now when I start to build the muscle, I'm actually going to be able to see my gains a lot better than I did when I had that coating of fat over the muscle. So I'm excited about that. Um, another thing I've learned, and again, this is across the board with keto, with Weight Watchers, with Optavia, it doesn't matter. Sleep is important. You have to get your sleep. You have to get your water in. Those are things you have to do. Um, I have noticed that on days that I'm not drinking as much water as I would normally, those are the days that I may feel a little bloated or whatnot. I know the water thing is difficult for a lot of people. So what I do is I take a water bottle. It could be any bottle. This is just a bottle of water that I bought at the store. And I added um, one little packet. Sometimes I do half. just depends of some kind of flavor enhancer. Optavia sells their own. You can go to the grocery store and buy them. They make them with Stevia. They make them with Splenda. It doesn't matter, but you can add some kind of flavoring to your water. It doesn't have to be potent and strong, but just enough so that you drink, like you look forward to that. Um, let me see, this bottle is 30.4 fluid ounces, so it's basically 900 milliliters, almost a thousand, which is really good. So I try to have several of these every day, and when I do, I feel really good. Another thing, I don't know, I guess I could keep going, but this is a big one. I don't drink coffee anymore. You guys know I was a big Starbucks lover, and um, oh my God, I was like a addicted. And the keto coffee with the butter and the heavy cream, that was like the ultimate. You know, it does keep you full for a long time, but again, it's calorie dense. And um, now that I don't have that in my life anymore, really, I drink hot tea. That's my thing, the herbal tea. There's no caffeine. There's no calories. I just feel better. I don't know why. And I've talked to a lot of people within the last few months about coffee. And people will say, oh, yeah, I'm, I need coffee to get going in the morning. I can't do a day without my coffee. That's bad. Guys, that is like an addiction. And while coffee tastes amazing, because I love a taste of hot, fresh coffee, um, it does cause inflammation because it's acidic. And therefore, for people like me trying to lose weight and things like that, it might not be the best alternative. So um, that was a big eye opener for me. Um, and it was not that difficult to get rid of my coffee. Only because I had steered away from the caffeine um, a good year or two ago. And so drinking decaf, it wasn't that I was getting the jolt. I just wanted the actual taste of it. Um, so it was easy to get rid of. I, I kind of missed it for like probably a week or so. But um, Optavia does allow you to have coffee though. I don't want anyone thinking it doesn't. Because it does. But I'm just telling you that I'm finding the acidity of coffee, whether it be regular or decaf, um, is definitely an inflammation uh, trigger. So if you have arthritis, if you have anything regarding inflammation, um, lupus, things like that, keep it out of your diet.
So those are some main things that I've learned. Um, I have learned a lot about myself, honestly. I've learned that I don't have to obsess over carbs, that it's okay to have good carbs. And it is just a calorie in versus calorie out scenario. And that's what works for me. So I hope this helped you. And if you have any other questions that you want answered, leave them below. And I will be more than happy to make a part two to this video if you'd like. So anyway, thanks for sticking around. Subscribe if you're not. And I will see you in my next video. Have a great day, guys. Love so did anybody enjoy hearing that? Yeah, it's interesting. Yay. Yeah, I, 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 I like her. I, I, I am sure we'll be seeing more of her. And it's, it's all about the health. And you heard her say that. It's all about the health. It's not about which program you're on. It's how healthy it, what you're doing is for you. And you have to be really aware of that. You heard her say that uh, she was, uh, her business was keto. Uh, she obviously is well-versed in health and, and fitness. And, you know, she's speaking from an educated uh, point of view. And I didn't hear her say anything that I wouldn't agree with. Did anybody else? No. No. So um, that's what I'm making this about tonight is health. Uh, and I'm going to talk about our program. So our program is scientifically proven. I love what she said about fuelings, didn't you guys? Yes. Yeah. That, that really hit home for me. Optivia works because it's simple and easy to follow. Our proven optimal five in one plan, five of your daily meals are optimal. Via fuelings, you choose them from more than 60 delicious, convenient, nutritional, interchangeable, scientifically designed fuelings. Your body will enter a gentle but efficient fat burning state, essential for losing fat. You heard her say that she lost weight. She even body built, but she couldn't see her muscle because she lost weight, not fat. That's a huge difference. Each fueling contains high quality protein which helps retain lean muscle mass, keeps you from, makes you lose fat and retain muscle, and the probiotic cultures, which helps support digestive health as part of a balanced diet and healthy lifestyle. Our proven plans and products were developed by physicians, dietitians, and scientists, and have been used by more than 1 million clients and recommended by more than 20,000 doctors since their founding. In addition to five fuelings per day, eaten every two to three hours, you'll learn another healthy habit, how to make a lean and green meal for you and your family. When you know what optimal nutrition looks like, healthy eating becomes second nature. I don't think we ever put enough emphasis on the people who uh, create our food and how important it is to them. We're always saying we're a physician-led program. We're always saying that our food is scientifically formulated. We, we don't really give the kudos to the people behind it that are actually doing this. This is the uh, panel of experts. And um, Lisa, would you read their, their credentials? Just the credentials. You don't have to read the top. You're muted. I think. I had emergency vehicles out front. Um, Lawrence Cheskin is an associate professor of health, behavior, and supply at Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health and director of Johns Hopkins Weight Management Center. Ooh, Johns Hopkins. Uh, Simon Barcara. MD, PhD, is president of the Nutrition Board of Professors at the Mexican School of Public Health and director of research on nutrition policies and programs, the National Institute of Public Health. Wow. Susan Barr is a, is a PhD, RD, professor of food, nutrition, and health, University of British Columbia. George Spray, Boyd Professor Emer Emeritus and Professor of Medicine Emeritus at the Pennington Biomedical Research Center, Louisiana State University. John Forreth, Professor, Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences, Department of Medicine, Baylor College of Medicine. Stephen Hamesfield, Professor and Chair, Pennington Biomedical Research Center, Louisiana State University. Mark Messina, PhD, President, Nutrition Matters, and Adjunct Associate Professor, Department of Nutrition, School of Public Health, Loma Linda University. Sylvia Arro, President of SR Strategy and Adjunct Professor at Tufts Friedman School of Nutrition Science and Policy and University of Massachusetts Amherst.
Thank you, Lisa. Uh, that's quite the pedigree right there. Yeah. Yes, and that's why um, I, I just had um, a person I was talking to that I think they, they're the reason I probably did this tonight, but um, uh, they're thinking about coming back to the program. They had success on it, but then they went back to the, their eating habits, and she just doesn't want to do the f food. And so we talked about it, and I told her, I said, you know, we're going to have to fix your brain before we fix your body because it, for you, it's all about the food. It needs to be about the health. She really is struggling just to be alive. And so it's the healthy lifestyle. It's the balance of the carbs, the proteins, and the fat. And that's the scientific formulation of the fuelings that we all get the benefit of. We don't really get understand the value of what it, we have in our hands. You're breaking up. I'm breaking up? I can hear you fine. Oh, okay. That's your computer. So healthy living habits are more than just one thing. And it's not just the fuelings. That's why we have the four components of our program. The education piece, the coach, uh, the, um, uh, the fuelings, and the community. You know, there's so much research out there about community. And the community that we have, is, is, it's, it's, it didn't start out where it's at now, but I am very, oh, I love our community. I love getting in there and reading the posts. I love seeing people succeed. And I love seeing people encourage other people in their journeys. It's amazing. And uh, so habits of health, an active lifestyle, measuring yourself right away. Lisa has become the master at that. Uh, fitness and exercise, healthy food, getting your uh, checkups, your medical checkups. The uh, top 10 benefits of a good night's sleep. You want to read that, Dorothy? Where is she? <laughs> Dorothy's not there. See, I can't see nobody. <laughs> sleep keeps your heart healthy. Sleep may prevent cancer. Sleep reduces stress. Sleep reduces inflammation. Sleep makes you more alert. Sleep bolsters your memory. Sleep may help you lose weight. Naps make you smarter. Sleep may reduce your risk for depression. Sleep helps the body make repairs. Thank you, Dorothy. And the benefits of drinking water. Bird mom, you want to do that? <laughs> okay. You lose weight oh, at yeah, the best. You laugh. Why did you laugh? <laughs> because that's my thing. I don't really don't drink water. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> you lose weight at a faster rate. You flush it out toxins from your body you improve you improve your muscles and endurance and flexibility your ability to focus and concentrate gets sharper you boost your metabolic rate you get a glowing and healthier skin complexion you lower the risk of many diseases water promotes the growth of healthy hair you are able to stimulate your digestive system water include improves blood circulation you are re-energized and it helps uplift your mood. Yeah, seventy percent of our body is water, so really, uh, it's crucial. There's no doubt about that. Weight loss, as opposed to fat loss. So there's a lot of programs out there you'll lose weight on. They all work as long as you follow them, but not all of them are designed to also create health, create health in the process. And that's why we don't have a competitor. Uh, there's no one that's in the health field. We're not in the weight loss field. We're in the health field. And uh, what Felicia was referring to there in the weight loss segment is she was very successful on keto. Uh, but, um, you know, she found out she was sick at the end of it and that, that was not sustainable. To her. her doctor told her she had to get off of it. So crash dieting and improper training, muscle plus fat plus water loss, decreased fitness, decreased strength, poor performance, early aging, and reduced immunity. Where when you uh, get into our program, where you have your uh, nutrition provided for you, all your thinking is done for you, and it's done on a consistent basis. So you're getting the correct nutrition, you're getting the education, you're getting the training, uh, stored body fat loss. So when you go into fat burn, you start burning fat, not muscle. Uh, improve fitness, you start feeling better. You get stronger. Uh, you, you can do more and do it longer. And it delays aging. I hear all the time 
about how much younger, and you can look in the photos of people who have been on this program and lost weight, and they're 10 years older and look 10 years younger. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, and reduce risk of diseases. And the reason that is, is because while they were losing weight, they were also nourishing their bodies. When you're just losing weight and you're not concerned about the, what the body's having to go through while you're ripping the weight off of it and you're not paying attention to everything else that the body needs, if sooner or later, you know, you got to pay the debtor, you know? So that was it. And all we're going to do is talk about learning and growing. And we're going to do what your big takeaway tonight was and then anything else you want to share on a personal level with the group. And that way we can get back and see each other. And what my big takeaway tonight was, is how good we have it with um, our product and, and what, what has the gift that's been put in our hands and in our lives. And I remember when I became a health coach, it was not because I wanted to be a health coach, helping other people and, and, you know, telling other people what to do and me, myself, have my own set of problems that I have to do in terms of weight and stuff. That was not high on my list of things to do, but my coach told me that. Uh, the, that 75% of people who become health coaches, they maintain their weight loss. And I understood pretty well into this why that was the case, because you, you're always having to make sure you do what it is. You got to walk your talk. And, uh, and after a while, uh, walking your talk becomes doing what you want to do anyway. It's no longer an effort. And weight is not the issue anymore because you've learned about loving yourself. You've learned about caring about others. You've learned about uh, wanting to do right by your own self and your own health. You understand what you're putting in your mouth and sitting around is doing to your uh, life in the long run. So all the education, the camaraderie, I, we, we call our uh, Optavia uh, group our family and when we go to convention in a room of 10,000 people you don't meet a stranger so we the ones of us that are coaches we really do have the community of Octavia y'all get a y'all get a, a peripheral of it but for us it has become very meaningful in our life so I will pass to Dorothy the birthday girl <laughs> Um, I honestly, I think probably for me, it, the whole thing is the simplicity of it. You get up in the morning, you pick five products and you eat your lean and green meal and you are protecting your muscle mass of your body. And it is, I mean, there is no way just the general public public could figure out exactly what they have to eat to balance everything that they're eating even if they're on weight watchers and they're picking and choosing they'd have to be a dietitian to know if they're getting everything that they need to protect their muscle mass yeah and i'm going to go with um martha toast well i was thinking um what was the, what am i beginning with your biggest takeaway and then anything else you want to share. Okay. My biggest takeaway is that you all and we all are representatives of the science community, the medical community. No other diet can say that. We represent and are selling, not, not to make the money, but selling to bring healthy people together and make life better as a, your family doctor does and I doubt a family doctor could look at all Dr. Anderson's work and study, studies and everything and have any find anything wrong with them but I'm sure they could most any other diet which we good know that point. good point you know one of the things that Martha has said to me is how uh, she's noticed our uh, skin and uh, we don't age that with a lot. Go ahead, I'll let you say it, Martha. Oh, I, yeah, I just, I noticed it on everybody that I've been around that's been on this. And looking at Connie right now, I mean, she's been sick 
and she doesn't look sick. She looks healthy and she looks like she's 25 ready to go out on a date tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, she really does. And the skin coming back, it doesn't go away and then you have to do something. I mean, you don't get all flabby and then, oh, now what do I do? It just, it just neutralizes and becomes youthful, warm, exciting body again on the skin. Yeah, it's because of the health. Who are you passing to? Oh, Thank you, Martha. To Martha. <laughs> um, I think my biggest takeaway was um, when I went on it, the amazing result of having the five um, uh, meals, peelings of, um, well, then it was Take Shape at Octavia because it definitely, um, within a short time, I was off of insulin and everything. And when she was showing the other one, the first thing I saw was the amount of fat they were having. And that is, with a lot of diseases, that is a big no-no. So I don't know how that anybody could get healthy on it with that much fat uh, in your diet. But I think the biggest takeaway was when she was saying about the convenience, the simple, you, you do your meals, you're, you eat every two to three hours, and I still do that, and I still do that most of the time. It's been bad this last couple of weeks. I've been very bad on it all, but, but um, the change, and, and um, though I can't do the five and one, um, my, they, nutrition that don't, but they're recommending the four, two, and one. So basically, I'll be eating seven meals or feeling the day. <coughs> but I get up early enough in the morning emotionally and stay up late enough that. No, you won't be. You won't be eating seven meals. Because a four, two, and one is not seven meals. Well, it's it's um, it's your six meals. Your it's your five meals, your lean and green, and an extra snack. Yeah, but that extra snack has to be eaten with a meal. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, you have oh, to. See, where did I miss that? I believe, and Connie can correct me, but uh, I think that if you're if you're choosing the the four, two, and one, the grain or the fruit has to be eaten with either one of your fuelings or your meal. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So uh, if if you're in the weight loss, if you're in the weight loss. In order to stay, to lose weight, so the four, two, and one is a reduced calorie. That's what it is. So you're going to still lose weight, but it's going to be s slow. The five and one, which is why so many people uh, choose the five and one, is the rapid weight loss program, and you can do it quicker and do it healthy because you're burning fat and you're not uh, reducing muscle. And within a very short period of time, you go into fat burn, which reduces your hunger, increases your, uh, energy and it reduces your inflammation. And so you can re you can lose fat, not, not, uh, lean muscle. And so that that's the four, two and one is intended to give you the reduced, uh, calorie benefit of weight loss, and you're not going to have the rapid weight loss uh, benefit from that. But Martha, you are at your weight, so that's that's the only reason that I would have a different conversation with you. And it is how many calories based on what weight you want to weigh, and the amount of exercise you're doing, and the age that you are. What are the calories that you should be consuming a day? And since you're not in a weight loss program, you may want to be doing actually the three and three, where you have three meals a day and three of the fuelings a day. That's what I thought would be better for me than the, than the other. Yeah, because the four, two, and one is still a weight loss. And Dorothy's right that if you're having that snack and it's going to be something that has carbs in it, you need a protein with it. And the only way to get a protein with it is to eat it with something right. else. Right, right. And that's, uh, but, but you shouldn't be in a, you shouldn't be in a, a, a weight loss program right now. You should be in something to sustain yourself and uh, maintain your weight. So let's say that you picked a banana for a for your snack, 
and you wanted to still do the four and two, well then put something that has protein with that snack when you're eating it. Right? Yeah, yeah, either a fueling, either yeah. a fueling yeah. or, eat it, or eat it with your lean and green. Yeah. Yes, I have been doing the um, fruit with like my oatmeal or in the, uh, the, um, the via cereal, cold yeah. cereal. Did we say yeah. the same thing, Dorothy? Yes. yes, we're saying the same thing because if you eat your one, which is your grain or your fruit, okay, if you eat it alone, <coughs> you eat a carb. Okay. So you got to you got to combine it. You always got to combine a carb with a, a protein because what happens is when you eat just the carb, your blood sugar spikes and it's going. Right, to and I, I do know that. Yeah, yeah. And, but I'm telling you for the benefit of list, people listening right. to this conversation, uh, I, I don't want to leave them with part of the information. And so when somebody eats a, a carb without having protein with it, their sugar spikes. And then when that sugar falls, you're going to be looking for a, a bad carb. to. That's what your body's going to be craving. I learned this from Dorothy. Am I saying it good, Dorothy? Exactly. No, that's... Well, I finally got it, but it took me years to get it. And I thank you for that. <laughs> Who are you passing to, Martha? And thank you. Um, how about bird mom? Okay. 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 Um, I think my biggest takeaway was uh, the explanation between um, the keto diet and the, the Optavia, and that one focuses more on weight loss and the other is on health, and that's so important. So I, I really enjoyed learning that. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Who do you want to pass to? Uh, Lisa. I'm brain dead, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> what else is new? Oh. Well, you, you were kind of impressed with our panel. I mean, oh, wow. a lot of people, it's no wonder the, the what we have. Uh, and I noticed that mental health was in there as well. Yes, yeah. that's what was impressive. Um, yeah. the, the mental health aspect of it, the, the panel is very impressive, of course, you know, I'm impressed with the feelings, the feelings and knowing how to properly use them and properly fuel my body has changed my life. Um, but also the Loma Linda, I think, I think in some of my educate education throughout my journey here, Loma Linda is, a, is like in a blue zone. So mm -hmm. am I correct in that? Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Um, if not, other people may not know what the blue zone is, but yeah. Yeah. Um, Maybe I should do a post on that in our room. But uh, just just like you reminded me what Grandpa said, when we know better, we do better. And that's that's all part of, of the benefits of our program is it is focused. I'm, I froze, didn't I? No, you're good. Okay. Um, the, the fo and, and I have much respect for Dorothy because Dory, Dorothy was the first one among us that started with the focus on the wellness versus the weight. And so I, I it was always there. Yeah. But I mean, we, we were, I just remember in the early days of being in here, my focus and a lot of our focus was on the program, but the weight loss aspect of it. And when we flipped the switch from weight loss to wellness, which is, completely my focus now and i'm actually going to give myself kudos because all of the things they're talking about there your water your exercise your nutrition i'm on all of those yeah. and i also have a girlfriend that and i was a little bit keyed into keto um my friend jamie the one that we were that marcia and i went to see at dinner last night which was fabulous Marcia. um she does keto uh wow. so we had an in-depth conversation about it but you always you're always picking up more and I just appreciate the, the, the complete package that we bring. And I'm still always amazed at everywhere you look, there's, there's, because you pay attention to all these advertisements and I'm not knocking any of them, but you have, you know, the Jenny Craig, the Weight Watchers, the Nutrisystem, the, the Keto, the Atkins, you, you have all these things. And I have noticed in, in the, the recent time frame leading up to this, all of them are coming over to the wellness part of it right. and mimicking our program because what we have is amazing. And like, I really, really appreciate uh, Martha Mullen Toss uh, 
illumination there that what we have is backed by science in the medical community. So that, you know, there's research and stuff that backs a lot of these other things, but research only goes so far. But when you, when you add the, the health, the medical and mental health community and, and, and all that, you know, science is just a tiny part of it. True mm -hmm. science. I mean, there's a difference between true science, that being right. a collective body of scientific, proper scientific research right. in the medical community versus, um, I'm sorry, but I'm of the opinion that, that you can skew research. So uh, you have to be careful in these, in a lot of these programs, what they're calling research. You have to be careful. Oh, absolutely. Right now. And you can see who Dr. Anderson has brought to his team. Yeah. He brought the, <laughs> the elite of the elite. Yes. These yes. are people who are there only to help heal people. That's what they yeah. have. That's, want, that's what they want out of their life. That's, uh, that's, 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 their, that's their goal. That's their purpose and meaning. And when you see that they're all on our team, we couldn't afford them. No. <laughs> but we have full access to them, and it's through this beautiful program that Dr. Anderson has created. You got to pass to Tony now, Lisa? We saved the best for last, so Poppy, take it away. Okay, well, I enjoy the fact that you talked about the easy part of the program, the 501. You know, when I was in the 501, I did it faithfully, but I could be in the car, I could be in my office. I could be working anywhere. I had this stuff with me for the day if I was going to have bars or drinks or whatever. And it was so easy just to open a bar and three hours, oh, yeah, I got to eat this. And I ate it and I felt completely full. I didn't have to worry about it. And I was getting everything. Everything was working around my system perfectly. So the, the simplicity of the whole program is what I got from her that she, you know, said, this little bar, that's all you need, you know. And it doesn't matter which one it is, they're all going to do the same thing. So that, that's, you know, you don't have to say, well, let's see, I better just take a little bit of this or a little bit of that, or I can't have too much or I have to wait. No, it's all there. Here it is. Done. You know, three hours later, you drink a shake. Done. So, yeah, the simplicity of the program is what I, you know, take away my was. And you were really big on all the healthy habits. You, you loved learning how to do something in its healthiest form. You have truly embraced that. I think you're the, I think the reason that you're as healthy as you are is because you left unhealthy habits behind. So as much as the five and one helped you get your healthy weight, uh, it was the learning, it was the learning piece that changed your, your lifestyle. Learning, yeah, learning about, you know, all things. And now look at me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so Dorothy, oh, you're so I'm, funny. <laughs> I want to come back to Dorothy because okay. she made a statement about. Uh, is it, is your, Dorothy, this is your new year. Yes. And a new year for you is going to be just out of this world. You know, I, I want to wish you a happy birthday. I do happy I new see year. Oh, I mean, it's a brand thank new you. year. So I believe that too. I really do. Yeah. I think it's going to be a year. Yeah. yeah. And, and, oh, you know, I, it's going to be a red pantsuit year. To me, yes. happy birthday yes. was the day that I was born. That was a happy birthday. And then right. after that, it's just a happy new year. Just like the United States, they have happy new year every year. They don't say the birth of the nation. No, it's a brand new year. So for yeah. you, it's going to be a brand new, wonderful, perfect year. I think so. I think it's going to be a good year. Yeah. So, Dorothy, in closing, thank you, Tony. Um, when we first, a lot of people, uh, well, I guess, may, well, Martha, Martha Pickering would be aware of this. But when when uh, Dorothy became a, a client and when she became a health coach, she really had a problem with the additives that were in the food and the fact that she was now consuming things that she had avoided in the Metafast product. And, and, that, and that's why I say Dorothy has always been health oriented when it comes to this because she really had issues with the additives that were in the Metafast product. Dorothy changed 
her whole persona changed when Dr. A said, we're no longer going to give substandard products in a company that's designed to create health. We are going to bite the bullet. We're going to leave Metafast behind. It's a good product. It's worked. It's helped a lot of people. But if I'm going to tell people I'm getting them healthy, then I want to make sure they have the healthiest food about fuelings available to them. I wanted you to talk to that, Dorothy, and we will close on that. Your your growth and from when you were a client to when you were a coach and then when Dr. A did the Optavia. Well, it was I live in farming country and it's amazing um how many people are attuned to what's in the products. And I got a lot of flack from people who did not want to have anything that had additives in it, which I felt the same way. But for me, I needed to control diabetes. So for me, it was, it was a question of controlling my diabetes. But I, I am so impressed with the fact that it's all pure, that you can use this to sustain your health for the rest of your life. And which I would, I would want to have used the products that had artificial things in it for the rest of my life. Uh, so I'm, to me, it's food. To me, it is delivered to my door. And it is something that I use every single solitary day. And, and I feel like I can present it with confidence that it, they're not going to find a better product anywhere. And, that's, that, and that is the difference. Yeah. Well, I thank you guys. This was really good. Yeah. I hope you learned something. I always enjoy the company. Yep. Happy birthday, Dorothy. Thank you. Happy birthday, Happy birthday Bye. Bye. Good night, everybody. We'll see you next Bye. Tuesday. Okay. okay. Cuddle, cuddle. <laughs> Love that. I know.